going to do our TMVR for you. I'm going to have Dr. Patel introduce the case if we could get our slides up. Good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, so this is a 47-year-old petite lady with a BMR of 24. She's symptomatic since the last six months with progressive shortness of breath in NYHA class 3. Both the mitral and the tricuspid have failed, and we have done a transcatheter tricuspidal replacement for her recently in September. She's now having severe mitral valve regurgitation, and she's here for transcatheter mitral valve replacement. So on TEE, she's got anterior directed severe mitral regurgitation jet. So by our CT measurements, her annulus area is about 439 square millimeters, which would be about 26 S3. It is an incomplete mitral ring um, slash band without any anterior uh, co cover. So we did some three-dimensional sizing. This is the left atrium into the left ventricle view. And a 23S3, as you can see by the arrows, will be undersized for this ring. So we are going to be placing a 26S3, which is on the far right-hand side, into this side. By our LVOT prediction modeling, uh, we found that when we place a 26S3 and flare it about 80% ventricular, we're going to have a predicted neo-LVOT about 143 square millimeters, which is going to cause us a significant gradient from our own internal series. So the problem is how to address the LVOT obstruction issue. In a combined project with Emory, the NIH, and Henry Ford Hospital, we've developed this technique called Lampoon. And I'm going to have Jafar Khan, who actually uh, worked through the steps and invented it at the NIH to go through the animation. So Jafar? So this is all done through two retrograde coronary guiding catheters uh, that we put in from the femoral arteries. So that's a catheter going into the adjacent to the LVOT and one into the left atrium. Through the left atrial catheter, a snare is extruded. And through the LVOT catheter, or guide wire under electrosurgery energy is passed into that snare. It is ensnared and externalized to form a wire loop around the center and base of the anterior mitral leaflet, so the base of the A2 scallop. That loop is tightened and then further energized, lacerating the leaflet in two and splitting it and splaying it either side by the cordae that, are, that remain intact, sort of mimicking uh, surgical anterior modification. When the valve is in place, you can see to the right the stent struts are unobstructed by the anterior leaflet, but without, the, without lampoon, this would be covered, causing severe LVOT obstruction, as you can see without lampoon. With lampoon, the LVOT size is reduced somewhat, but largely patent, allowing us to perform TMVR in these patients. The procedure starts with a transeptal. If you can move forward, we actually had a thick septum. There may have been a patch there or something. So we actually ballooned across it just to get our catheters across. Keep going. <coughs> Once we were able to get the sheath across, we actually went ahead and did our full septostomy for valve delivery. So the big sheath is already in the vein. We've pre-closed the vein. We use an agilis and float a wire through. And similar to the anagrade taver days, we go ahead and get out the aortic root. We snare it, and so now we've created an, a an AV loop. And that's, an o that's a 300 run-through wire that sort of acts as a rail for the procedure, we sort of floss back and forth, make sure we're not under any cords or anything. <coughs> so then over that run through wire retrograde from the femoral artery, we place a catheter across the aortic valve up into the left atrium and open a snare to receive the wire, as you saw in that animation. That's an Atrieve 18 by 30 snare. Then a second catheter comes also from the right groin, put in the LV, and now we're trying to get to the base of the anterior leaflet. So then, so then we use what we call nowadays standard transcable technique, that is an astato wire and a piggyback catheter. We will put the, the end of it gets hooked up to a bovie that we set at either 50 or 70 watts. Didi, can you show, uh, can you point on the TE? Can we switch to TEE to show what it looks like? So do you see she's pointing at the LVOT catheter at the base, the hinge point of the anterior leaflet at A2? Can everyone see that? Yep, that's very clear. And then there's picture. another catheter going through the middle and up, and there's a snare up in the atrium. You can see it faintly uh, up top. Absolutely. So oh. once we're where we want to be, we will electrify the wire and push through the base of the leaflet, and you will know that you have energy because you will see uh, bubbles in the atrium. Snare it. So there we snare the wire after it's burned and keep going, and then we pull it through. Explain. And then as we pull those two catheter back, the only thing that's now uh, touching anterior leaflet in the side of a, a Stato wire in between two JL 3.5 guides. And, and do you get a lot of MR while you're setting this up? So if you pull too tightly, you will get MR. So you can just simply loosen it. We don't actually tighten it up till we're ready to actually create the laceration. I mean, we're gonna create torrential MR. 
when we lacerate the leaflet. So we want to make sure that no matter what happens, we can deliver a valve. So up until this point, in all seven cases done, a valve has gone transeptal. We've gone into through the ring or through the valve and then back out into the atrium on the left side so that we know we can safely deliver a valve in theory within you know, 10 or 20 seconds if we had to. If she's hemodynamically stable, we'll show you on TEE what the tear looks like. So Ted, and, and hey, what? it's Vasilis here. We have pulled a little bit tight on the anterior leaflet to get ready to burn, know, which causes a little bit of MR. <laughs> so we should go ahead and make the burn. And then we can talk some more if that's Only okay with the panel. Absolutely. Sir. We're going to be quiet and let you guys work. This is certainly the critical yeah. part of the procedure. Uh, Ted, the lower uh, number is uh, left atrial pressure. You see our V wave, which started around 3540, is now up to 57 because we're tensioning a little bit. All right. So I'm going to hold one catheter. We're going to do a gentle burn and we're going to pull back on the LA catheter just to tighten it up a little bit. So, ready? Bovion. 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 Okay. Bovion. Our, our blood pressure is yeah. quite good. It's a it's a hundred over sixty nine. Move on. And better. now you see we've broken the leaflet. So look at our blood pressure now, Ted. It's better. Uh, it's actually Got better. It. Yeah. Yeah. So can you guys see the hemos? So our blood pressure is better. Can we show the echo how much MR we have? Go ahead and so it's a lot of MR. Are you pulling back on both catheters? Correct. And we've electrified the side of that wire. There's only two millimeters of wire exposed. I think, Dee, you have any 3D of the anterior leaflet split? We, yeah, we here is on 2D. The pointer is pointing at the Laura, hole of the anterior leaflet right here. So if I play this, you can see that lopsided movement of the anterior leaflet and the hole. And on the right side, the colorful, you can see going through that leaflet on the um, A2 scallop. And on 3D, you see, Ted, we have lots of time here. Uh, See that hole show. right here? Hole ventilation. <coughs> Pace around at 180. Cine. I think it's good. You mm -hmm. want me to start going? Mm -hmm. Slow. There's four left. Yeah. I'm coming down. Push the balloon forward a little bit. Yeah, you flared it at him. You got a good flare. Pace her off. Dee Dee, if you can show flow across the struts of the valve Here through you the LVOT. There's your so Adam, I, I think a big part of the positioning there is your, your calm demeanor uh, does not reflect how difficult it is to land that in the right place. Here we are squared up on the valve. We're flared. Perfect deployment. And more yeah, importantly, perfect, perfect landing. the flaring is also your, your technique for flaring is great because you did not risk uh, too much shortening of the left atrial side of the frame to wind up with the valve moving forward. So that's really super. So let's look at LVOT. On the TEE images on the anterior side, this is a 140 LVOT view. You can see the strut frame is actually touching the basal anterior septal wall and making contact. On the right screen is the color, and you can actually make out the struts and the diamonds of the actual leaf, uh, the transcatheter valve, and there's flow going completely across that into the aorta without much aliasing. So I think there's little doubt that had there not been this preparatory procedure combining the acute aortomitral angle, the encroachment on the left, left ventricular outflow tract, and the length of the native anterior mitral leaflet, this LVOT would have been essentially shield, sealed shut. And the fact that we have Forward great hemodynamics <laughs> and that we see echo uh, Doppler flow across the uh, transcatheter heart valve struts uh, shows that the procedure succeeded. Moreover, although we were a little rushed in trying to show it, Didi showed you a 3D transesophageal echo right beforehand that actually showed the lacerated A2 scallop well, of the anterior mitral valve. Well, well, I was stunned that the systemic pressure went up when you lacerated the uh, anterior leaflet. Do you think you relieved LV OT obstruction at that point? No, that Ted, we, we, we were causing a lot of MR. We were tending that anterior leaflet open and, and propping it open, and, and that's what that's what caused the hypotension. As soon as the, as soon as you stopped uh, tending it, uh, right. the actual valve. Uh, <coughs> closed better and the blood pressure just shot up immediately. Well, what, what has been the case in all eight cases now is you think, well, you would cause cardiogenic shock with the severe MR, but um, we haven't really, even though the MR has gotten worse, we haven't really seen it right away. Could you but show hemodynamics <laughs> because it's pretty impressive. We had a, about a five, 10 millimeter gradient to start and there isn't anything more. And again, 
This would have been one of those life-threatening LBOT obstructions. By TE, the gradient's unchanged from baseline. <coughs> Femoral Inject. artery. Injecting. Look there's at that LBOT. No, there's absolutely no uh, MR. It's a really remarkable. So right. look in this picture here. Can you see how little gutter space there is actually under that bell? Mm -hmm. uh, worked out very well as an understatement. The, uh, it's really a stunning result. And this picture is uh, you know, remarkably clear in terms of seeing how much the stent frame impinges on the LVOT. Really marvelous, wonderful case. Amazing. Thank you. Great job, Thank guys. Congratulations. Thanks for hosting. Very good. Good. Very 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 good. Very